On today's show, the fields are white, not with snow, but snow geese. It's a rare breed of hunter who chases this flock through the plains of the Midwest all the way into Canada. But chase them, they do. He's looking professional, Jim. Very professional. <laughs> Next up, it's time to go wild in the kitchen. And nothing says springtime like fresh trout on the menu. Our Minnesota-bound classic this week remembers a fishing trip down memory lane, down the Root River, in search of bites. What else? Those stories and more next. Look at the color. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Hi everybody, Raven and I welcome you to the show. You know there's a spring addiction in the upper Midwest that most of us don't know much about. It pertains to the spring migration of snow geese and the hunters who pursue them. Travis Frank has the story. A site like this needs no caption at all. The spring snow goose migration has taken over the prairie of South Dakota. Hundreds of thousands of geese are heading north to nest in Canada's Arctic tundra. Josh Huff follows their every move. We got probably 1,500, 3,000 snows feeding in here. Pretty good hide, pretty good field, nice and wide open. His livelihood depends on them. He's a snow goose guide. Now the work begins. A job few understand, a job even fewer would dare to do. You gotta be able to go a few days without a shower, be able to sleep forever, long nights, long days, a lot of hard work. Now it's time to set his spread. I'm gonna cover this whole area all the way around this pond with decoys. Bring in the artillery. All right, the plan is get all the layout lines out of the trailer, get them in a line right there. Then we're gonna grab totes, and I want them thin, spread out from me to him apart with the decoys, upwind. One at a time, decoys fill this field. I'd say 90% of your hunt's scouting, because I want to be where I know they're going to fly in the morning. I guess this is a good spot. They want to be here. It helps out a lot, though, when you got five sets of hands to do this. We hope this spread will lure passing geese within range. They're calling for 60 degree weather and south winds and sun. All three of them ring a bell in my head right now. They're going to push north. I start in Arkansas in February. By the time I get up here, I'm pretty beat, burnt, stressed. I've been getting my butt kicked on adult snow geese for two months. Josh works for South Dakota's Prairie Storm Outfitters. Each spring, their crew takes part in the spring conservation season. A season launched back in 1999 in hopes of controlling a snow goose population growing wildly out of control. Starting back in the early 1950s is when we were doing winter surveys for snow geese. The numbers were around six to 700,000. Back in the late 90s when we started this conservation program, the population was about 3.2 million in the wintertime. That number only counts for the Central and Mississippi flyways. Today, biologists estimate 10 million geese will flock to the nesting grounds of the Arctic tundra a number that's decimating the landscape. They're eating themselves out of house and home, literally. Although the Arctic is vast, there are only certain key habitats that birds use. As these numbers have increased, it's exceeding the carrying capacity of that habitat to support large numbers of birds. This image says it all. That fenced-in area shows what the tundra looked like before the geese arrived. The contrast is just amazing. When you see those pictures, it just really hits home as to how much damage has occurred on those breeding habitats. 
In the early 1900s, a typical migration pattern of these birds was, and this is an oversimplification, but literally fly from the Arctic nesting areas almost nonstop to the Gulf Coast states of Louisiana and Texas. And because they were restricted in the amount of habitat available in the winter, their population was pretty much in check. By the 1950s, agriculture practices changed. The Midwest landscape now provided a new food source. These birds learned very quickly that they could access new food supplies, that they could accumulate the resources they need to fly north. Hatch rates hit all-time highs, triggering the population boom. And once they get past that first year, their survival rates are very, very high. Experts in U.S. and Canada fear this growth may soon lead to disaster. We could have catastrophic disease outbreaks if the conditions were right. Precisely why this conservation season has become so important. On the South Dakota prairie, we put our last stake in the ground. We have been going for five hours putting this together. There are close to 3,000 decoys out. Now we have to hide the blinds. Tomorrow, we find out if it's all worth it. Come sunrise, the migration takes off. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC dealers. Rapala Ice Force, Border View Lodge, and by Star Bank. Time now to resume our snow goose hunt. You're probably wondering, with so many birds, what's the challenge? Well, let me say, snow geese are one of the most elusive game birds in America. Under a clear morning sky, the distant sounds of snow geese echo across the South Dakota prairie. These cackles remind us why we've come. The spring snow goose migration is in full force, and the crew at Prairie Storm Outfitters hopes we'll soon witness a spring tornado. If it happens, it would be a dream come true. But our dream quickly fades. Ice has locked our decoys tight. Bad news if you want a fool of goose. Josh Huff and Derek Garner quickly get back to work. It's never easy, is it? Call it a common hiccup in the unpredictable life of a snow goose guy. Took us about six hours yesterday to get fully set up, hid, decoys, all that. Just running some speakers. This is what I call my blind box. I got a box up behind us with eight speakers. It's a lot of work. But when it comes in and it all works and comes together, every moment's worth it. There's a flock below that. As the sun nears the horizon, we finally hunker down, just in time to watch the show. The migration is on, in full swing, pretty much. One after another, lines of migrating geese head north. The ruckus grows louder and closer. Just seeing it being out here, it's all worth it. For a snow goose guide, the sleepless nights, the endless miles of scouting, the investment in this decoy spread and the time it took to build it, it all comes down to this moment. Guys, we got some coming from the right here. You ready, guys?
Good shooting, boys. Good shooting. Look at that. That's amazing. When you see a big group of snow geese over the top, then they finally make their final swing, and then you shoot some birds, it's pretty rewarding. Very pretty. Quite a journey they go on. Yes, it is. Amazing. I get more satisfaction out of seeing smiles on faces than I do actually pulling the trigger. That was sweet, wasn't it? I understand why all the hours go in. It's for that one moment, just like that. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty breathtaking a lot of times, and you really can't explain it until you come and check it out. For Josh and Derek, the credit for this snow goose passion goes to a man that's no longer with them. Sean Eldridge was his name. And he pretty much brought the passion. I wanted to grow up, I wanted to be like Sean. I wanted to have a hunting camp, I wanted to run hunters. I wanted to go hunting every day, every day. He passed away a couple years ago, and ever since then, we've just had more heart, more soul to do it. That soul motivates them each day, from one field to the next, with the hope of bringing this spectacular migration up close and personal. We provide the opportunity. It's not a guaranteed hunt, but we're providing you the opportunity to harvest snow geese. Such is the life of the traveling snow goose guy. From the fields of Arkansas to the North Dakota border. It's something you have to, you have to love to do and be passionate about. I don't think there's a lot of people that like to uh, wake up at 2 or 3 in the morning or not even sleep at night to go lay in a muddy cornfield and then set out 1,500 to 2,000 decoys in each spread. Call it a dirty job. A dirty job with a world-class view. Beautiful rainbow trout. Coming up, Laura goes wild in the kitchen cooking up the perfect springtime recipe. Fresh trout from fresh waters. Closed captioning from Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Lake of the Woods Tourism. Time now to go wild in the kitchen. With the Minnesota trout season not far away, we thought, why not have a recipe for trout? And Laura and Chef Jim found just the right one. Today we're getting wild in the kitchen with Chef Jim from Fire Lake Grill House and Cocktail Bar. And Chef Jim, I understand that we are combining kitchen cooking with campfire cooking today. We're cooking in a kitchen, but this recipe is definitely suitable for a campfire. I love it. And it's summer season, which means it's trout season, and that's what we're grilling up? Yeah, it's trout, and we've got an abundance of produce, and this is going to be a great, quick, easy summer kind of dish. I love it. Let's get started. So first thing we want to season the fish. We've got this beautiful rainbow trout, very light, delicate meat, a little bit of salt and pepper. We put a little olive oil down first. That's going to keep it from sticking. And then I just laid the seasoned fish right on top of the olive oil. All right, so we're going to slice this lemon really nice and thin. You want about six slices, just enough to cover the, the filet. Okay. If you want to uh, give me a hand chopping that dill. Of course. Don't lose a finger in the process. Don't cut your finger, please. This is looking professional, Jim. Very professional. <laughs> and this is how easy it is. Just take these lemon slices. Okay. We're just going to put about three on each side. We're going to take that fresh dill and just kind of sprinkle that right over the fish. So now we're going to add the good stuff, the veggies. The veggies, yes we are. So we've got some great heirloom tomatoes. And you don't have to get fancy with these cuts. Just cut them into nice bite-sized pieces. Take I love heirloom out. tomatoes. Yeah, these are delicious. They're definitely a treat when they're in season. That's for sure. So we have corn, potato, green bean, and tomato, all going into the pan. We, we have them all going into the pan. It's like the whole garden's going in. Pretty much. OK. Just on the side? Just sprinkle them around just randomly. And last but not least, we need those great heirloom tomatoes on there. Yes, we do. Look at all the color in that pan. Beautiful. We're going to cover it up with a lid because we got all that nice, natural moisture from those fresh vegetables in there. We'll actually trap that moisture in there and it almost steams the trout a little bit. As much as I would love to be sitting around a campfire right now, we are cooking in the kitchen. So where are we going to cook this? The closest we have to a campfire here is our pizza oven, so we're going to use that today. Mm -hmm. 
All right, Jim, I'm uh, getting a little hungry here. Has it been seven minutes yet? It has been seven minutes. Okay. I think it's ready. All right, let's check it out. Should we check it out? Yes. Here's the test. Let's see how we did. Ooh, what do you think? Sizzling. It looks done to me. Fantastic. I think it's done. Looking pretty good. Yes. So there you have it. It's campfire cooking in the kitchen here at Fire Lake. And as always, Chef Jim, it's so easy to do, yet wildly delicious. What do you think? So good. Excellent. <laughs> beauty. Still ahead, sharing a canoe, a river, and some fishing memory. I call that a pretty nice double. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Connecticut. Tracker Boats. And by Totem Resorts. Time now for our Minnesota Bound Classic, and this one occurred on April Fool's Day on the Root River, a float trip I took with my friend Bill Planton, and we found brown trout. Smallmouth bass, it was great. All right, let's go find us some trout. On a cruel spring day, dreary skies and unseasonably cold, we float Minnesota's Root River, holding rod in hand with the hope all anglers forever carry. There have got to be a lot of fish in this neck of the woods because they just aren't up into the, uh, all the trout stream areas, I don't think yet. Flowing amid limestone bluff country, the root gets its name from the Dakota Sioux, who called it Hutkun. English translation, root. One of the largest streams in Minnesota Southeast, there are two more reasons why on this day, fishing companion Bill Planton and I are willing to suffer numb fingers, runny noses, to cast into the river. One reason is brown trout, the other, smallmouth bass. Oh, come on, there we go. Oh, it's a smalling. Is it a small? Yeah, it is. Whew, tough. I don't know, I haven't seen mine yet. Uh. Yikes. Oh. It's a small mom. You got one too? Yeah, golly. Holy the cool water, they are fighting fools. How's that? Good job. Look at that guy. Oh, man. Huh? I would call that a pretty nice double. I think the combination here in the Root River is unique in that we have trout and smallmouth bass existing, um, coexisting in an area where they're both spawning and they're both reproducing without having to be regulated by the DNR or anybody else. We interrupted a pair of courting geese, but they didn't seem to mind. And our special fishing canoe easily handled the Root's gentle rapids. There we go. All right. Did he smack it hard? Yeah. Oh, he's beautiful. He's beautiful. Careful. Oh, isn't he a dandy? Despite the icy current and icy breeze that carried us downstream, trout seemed to be lurking in every likely haunt. Oh, there we go. Ooh, good fish. Nice brown. Oh, he's so brown. My goodness. He's a big old brown fish. Oh, look at the color in him. Oh, I tell you what, we're the only ones out here. Indeed, some fishing days can't be judged by a chill wind and a gray threatening sky. Dandy, Billy boy. Wow. And I couldn't help but think as we drifted away of those who centuries ago floated the river's path. Certainly, we weren't the first to realize a bad day on the root is not so bad at all. Hasta la vista. All right, take me home. Country road. That was a good day though, huh? You know, after a fishing trip like that, I decided I needed a new rod and reel, so I'll be ready for the next fishing season, right? Well, that about does it for us. Remember, introduce a kid to the great outdoors. I'm Ron Shera, and of course, the star of the show is Raven. She's gonna learn how to cast, right? You gotta hold it like this.
Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. For more information on these stories and more, catch us on the web at mnbound.com.